Our appreciation is extended to Professor Dr. Atif Darwish, Professor of Obigaini Assumed University, for his valuable contribution. Thank you, Dr. Atif. Now it's time for our teleconference with Professor Dr. Ben Mole from Australia. If you may come here, you may come here. Hello. Hello, Ben. How are you? Do you see our pictures? Is, uh, is it clear? Yeah. Yes. We, we don't yes. see yours. We want to see. Uh, let's see. I put the camera on here. Okay. Thank you. We have uh, some few questions to you, if you allow us. And my yeah. colleague, Dr. Ashraf, will speak to you. So please. I'm, I'm sorry I'm just dressed in a, without a tie. I see you guys are very formal there. <laughs> okay. We would like to welcome Professor Dr. Ben Mal from Australia in our teleconference, and we would like to ask him some questions if he could share us with his uh, advice about them. Yeah. Uh, first question is, do you think time-lapse incubators would improve pregnancy rates? <sighs> I saw the questions just very recently. So I don't know, why should it improve it? What is the evidence? What is the evidence, Dr. Yeah. Uh, I guess what there is, is some, recent, uh, some recent literature in human reproduction and the RBM online that uh, um, claiming that it could be of better value than ordinary incubator. What do you think? Was it assessed in randomized studies or not? Uh, no, I guess it didn't uh, perform it in a randomized control trial. So then we don't know. Okay. So so I, uh, I think, um, so I understood, so what is it? So we, I don't know where Egypt is with its pregnancy rates with IVF. Could you inform me on that? Um, I we, uh, average about 45 uh, life births rate, uh, I guess. Uh, 45%, 45%, 45%, 45%, yes, life per rate, per which is uh, considerably high because our, your, uh, usually women are usually young in age. Yeah, so that's very good. So then I, I think you're in the position to evaluate, evaluate that with a randomized trial, and that's the only way to make real progress. Because everybody can claim. But, you, but in your center, whether in Netherlands or in Australia, or you didn't try to use uh, time lapse incubators. So listen, I am, I am living in Australia, but I don't have an Australian passport. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure what the Australian passport is. So I don't feel responsible for what Australians IVF clinics do, and actually, they do a lot. Where I think that is not that is a, that is actually over medicalization, and the Netherlands is not using. I would so like to advise if you are, if you are talking to a bigger room of gynecologists there. Yeah. There is a bigger. Ah, Can you I repeat the question? Say, sorry. Can you repeat your question, please? So my question is, you're talking to a bigger group of colleagues there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people, around uh, 400 people. So how many, how many IVF cycles do that people together? Around um, 45,000 in Egypt last year. 45,000 okay. cycles. So let's do it. You, and you have the, you have the time lapse integrator? No, no, we don't. no, 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 we don't. That's why we okay. ask this question. Is it cost benefit? Is it cost effective? We are not sure was it whether we are going to buy an, an expensive uh, incubator for nothing not to improve anything? That is a good question. But then what I want to propose is, because we, I was approached for this meeting, I think, two days ago. Um, so I could not go into detail in the literature. But I would then propose to just do a formal literature search, see how good it is. And 
if there is no trial, I wouldn't do it. And, and, and I would maybe negotiate with the person who provides the material to do the trial. Okay. okay. Can we shift to another question? Yeah, sure. Uh, is minimal stimulation protocols in IVF, do you have them uh, in place in your daily practice? Uh, they are used a lot also. So what, so what is, what do you, how do you find minimal stimulation? That's an important question. Uh, either Promet HMG or low dose HMG. Yeah, I, uh, I think that, uh, that, that it's actually good to go to mild stimulation. There is a, a list of the number of all signs you're targeting for the number of follicles. Five to ten. Yeah, um, maybe up to four or five. That's good. I think that all the data show that actually stronger stimulation doesn't add to the pregnancy rates, but it increases the risk of uh, 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 complications and bad outcomes, uh, both in the hyperstimulation as well as the, as the quality of the pregnancy now. So I would, and, and do you use it in a frozen uh, setting or in a fresh cycle setting? In a fresh, fresh cycle. Fresh cycle. Fresh cycle, I would go for minimal stimulation. The big question, and that is what's solved actually, if you go to frozen cycles, where you should really stimulate hard and then create, to say almost a family, and put them in the freezer. <laughs> so that you can use the result of the stimulation um, over multiple Transfers back single single embryo transfers. I, I don't think nobody knows the answer, but I think in terms of fresh cycles, I would go for my stimulation. Thank you. Proceeding to the third question, is there a place for low molecular weight heparin in the recurrent miscarriage? In your practice or your opinion? That, that is, I think that has been well evaluated. Uh, the group in the Netherlands and I was part of the group at that time did a randomized clinical trial comparing um, uh, uh, this treatment with and without aspirin uh, versus no treatment, and there is no benefit. And I think actually that there is no effective treatment for recurrent miscarriage whatsoever. And the other thing we know is that the pregnancy rates, the successful pregnancy rates of those women over longer time are very good. There is a good publication from Kramer in Fertility and Sterility last year that actually shows that if you just leave those women alone and you encourage them, that they will have a successful pregnancy rate of 70 or 80 percent without any treatment. Thank you. We don't have any proof that, that, that any treatment uh, improves that outcome. Thank you. Proceeding to the first question, what would you advise to do DNA, DNA fragmentation test for infertile couple routinely? For, for well, semen analysis, do you recommend the DNA mm -hmm. fragmentation test? Um, I, I don't think the value of that has been shown. And uh, again, I must say, uh, maybe I'm disappointing you people. I'm privileged to be with your meeting. I think it's special actually that we can communicate in this way. Um, um, so I, I, I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm basically very skeptical of a lot of interventions we do, and also the DNA fragmentation test has not any 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 beneficial value. I'm just involved in a systematic review um, that is not published yet, but the result of that is that those tests don't bring any benefit for the couples involved. Okay, if we uh, you say we are talking about uh, teleconference with you from Australia and here in Cairo. This would lead us to our last question to you. How could doctors yes. here in Egypt catch up with new information, catch up with new technology apart from in the pharmaceutical industry or industry in general? Uh, how could we catch up with um, knowledge, up-to-date knowledge, real knowledge, which could make a difference in our practice? Uh. Oh, that is the most difficult question there is. What is your answer? I, this, <laughs> one, this was one of my answers, to communicate with you through teleconference and then explore your opinion. I want you to answer. I think, here is my opinion. I think that as a medical profession throughout the world, we don't 
use the opportunity we have to communicate and inform each other. And it's actually strange that if you compare the medical profession to other fields, uh, like the military defense, that there is the air or uh, uh, issue with global warming, etc. And agreements between countries that in medicine there is no form actually or no organization that helps us in sharing our information. So I think we should build in that. Um, so I think that corporate probably is a good start. But I see that only as a start. And I actually think that we should discuss information that is common, etc. Uh, to come to better protocols. And I also, the other thing is, I think we should stick to our protocols. I think, specifically in Richmond medicine, we are at the risk of doing a lot of interventions, but we don't know whether they are effective. We just have addressed four questions. And I think one time I said, I don't know. Two times I said, don't do it. And only one time I said, do it. And I think this is about what we should realize about the innovation. So we should be more moderate. We should report our success rate. That's also important that we should share more. So I'm happy to come to meet at uh, any particular time in the future. Soon, soon, uh, inshallah. Another thing I want to say also is that we should be aware of uh, cultural difference between people. I just moved from the Netherlands to Australia. And that might be a small step because it might be that the countries are quite similar. But I experienced a lot of cultural difference between the Netherlands and Australia. Now, what about the cultural differences between Egypt and, um, and Europe? Um, I, it is not considered. Um, yeah. So I, that also, she's from Bosnia, the former Yugoslavia, and there are big differences I think, between people, and we should acknowledge that. And once we acknowledge that, we can communicate on what we think is the best, um, uh, the best knowledge and share. So, um, we would like to thank you for your valuable time, and we would like yeah. to ask you our last question. Would you like to come here in Egypt physically in the next year in Ghana IBF conference? Then I'm, I'm traveling on a regular basis between Australia and, uh, and uh, uh, Europe, as well as the US. Actually, I just booked my next trip with you. We'll bring us on a short holiday in Dubai. In Dubai. So, very close to Okay. So, we will. We should know your schedule, and then we invite you to come. Take your board for this. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And see you soon, Benedict. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.